welcome to Power Charting. I'm Bruce Frazier, and with us today we have a very special guest, Joe Turner. And uh, Joe is going to uh, have a uh, wonderful discussion with us about some things that we need to know. And uh, uh, so stay tuned. This was recorded on February uh, 14th of 2019 for broadcast on February 15th of 2019 and thereafter. So first thing is, uh, do want you to know that there's going to be a free webinar on February 19th, where Joe Turner and his business partner, Martin Prang, are going to have a, an in-depth discussion about uh, intermarket analysis, uh, their decision-making process, the research that they use to manage portfolios, and it's going to be a wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, we're all really looking forward to it. If you go to tsaasf.org, you will see on the home page at the top, you will see uh, the announcement of their presentation, and right below, you, uh, you can uh, click on register here and uh, register for this uh, free webinar. And also, check out TSAASF, a wonderful organization. Become a member. And uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, really exciting things happening in 2019 and uh, thereafter. Okay, so uh, this is uh, Joe Turner's disclosure uh, so that you can see that. And here we go. Uh, Joe Turner is a portfolio manager, he has been in the business for 50 years. This is his 50th anniversary. And he is a remarkable market thinker. He uh, does incredible research. Uh, we're excited to have him here today because we're going to have Joe as a regular. We're going to have him come back from time to time and talk about how he process it, processes information in the market, how he thinks about current situations, how he would manage portfolios. He's uh, somebody who's been doing this real time with clients for 50 years. He broke off and started his own firm uh, just about 40 years ago and has a tremendous amount of uh, knowledge and wisdom for us. And he also uh, has uh, done a remarkable job as a portfolio manager that whole period of time. And so we may get into that a little more today. So without further ado, Joe, thanks for coming. All right, Bruce, thank you for the invitation. And I always look forward to sharing experiences and, and a little bit of wisdom that comes out of all those experiences. Uh, you mentioned 50 years of uh, looking and analyzing uh, markets. I, I roughly calculate that's a little over 11,000 trading days of uh, watching market behavior. And I have probably seen 11,000 different ways to lose money. And to pinpoint this a little bit more uh, closer and why you understand uh, where, uh, where I started and also what formed the early years of my uh, beliefs and my experiences. I did get licensed as a stockbroker in uh, mid-December 1968. The Dow Jones, the week before I got out of a six-month training program, uh, hit its all-time high uh, of just over a thousand on the Dow Jones. And we did not see that level again surpassed uh, for any period of time until 1982. So you can see the first 14 years of my experience, my first experiences, were truly exploring the many ways and wonderful opportunities to lose money uh, because that was the secular long-term environment. So that's where in order to survive and understand uh, how to make money, Making money is all about not losing money. And the corollary to that could be that Wall Street uh, is designed to separate you from your money. So 
you put those two together and making money is all about risk management to use the uh, the proper term uh, to not losing so that's uh, that's what it is and there's only one rule that uh, you really need to know no that one rule is very simple all you have to know is don't lose now everybody is going to lose in the market you can't uh, you can't make hundreds or thousands of decisions investment decisions um, about an unknown future and expect every trade to turn out so uh, the key is you will lose but the key is don't lose big and um, I'll certainly explain to you the whys and the wherefores of that because I'm, I'm amazed by a phenomena and it really only exists in the stock market. And if you look around you at life, if you look around at nature, there's the, uh, the concepts of yin and yang or in the stock market, uh, regression to the mean. Uh, think of a pendulum, how time works, uh, but a pendulum goes from one extreme, slows down, it hits that extreme, and then it slowly comes back and goes, swings to the other direction and hits an extreme and keeps coming back. That is more prevalent in life, that, that uh, picture. But in the stock market, there's this cruel mathematics of losses. And that's the why you have to pay attention to not losing big the cruel mathematics of losses. So let's see what we mean by, by that. Well, and before we move on, Joe, let me just ask you. Uh, so you've like had 11,000 market days <laughs> and you've found 11,000 or more ways to lose. Does, does it, we ever get to a point if we keep writing down like every rule about how not to, how not to lose or every way we've lost uh, do we get to the end of the list or does this just keep do we keep finding new ways does this never end now uh, Bruce 50 years later and I still see ways new things well because market conditions change technology changes uh, indicators change um, you know it was easy to follow certain indicators back in the 60s you had things like odd lot short selling, which told you what the small uh, or more emotional or uninformed investor was doing, and you tended to do the opposite of that. Well, uh, we have many more tools today and vehicles that, uh, and technology that uh, shows us there are different indicators and there are different players. So the, the, the landscape, the investment landscape is continually changing. And you bring up a good point. What you need to do is to have tools that can make decisions through an ever-changing landscape, through an ever-changing uh, technology. Um, so different ways. You're, you're causing me to think about uh, experiences I've had in the past with technology where the technology went wild on me. And uh, maybe these are stories for a, a future episode, but anyway. So. Sure. Well, uh, you you well remember October of uh, 1987 when we we didn't have to worry about big market declines because we had quote portfolio insurance end quote and of course that turned out to be a self reinforcing uh, market massacre 22 percent in one day. Yeah, it was like a circular firing squad. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah so, that was, well, I was right there with you when that happened and uh, we were sort of in awe. <laughs> that was quite was, a moment. It was something to behold. A, a oh whole bull market transformed before our eyes in what, a couple of hours. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, should we move uh, to the next slide? Sure. Go ahead. So this is, this is what, uh, uh, there are just new ways every day to, uh, you know, to lose, lose money in the market. So, um, but this is the phenomena, and this is the what I was referring to as the cruel mathematics of losing, because uh, it's not just a uh, symmetrical exercise where if you lose 10%, you just have to go up 10% to uh, get even. No, if you lose 10%, you have to go up 11%. If you lose 20%, uh, you're 
uh, $100 drops to $80. To get that $20 back to break even, you're working on an $80 base, you've got to go up 25% to break even from a 20% loss. And of course it gets worse if you lose 50%, uh, then you need 100% profit uh, you know, to make back, to get back to that uh, break even. Now, well, this doesn't seem fair to me, Joe. It's not fair. That's, that's <laughs> why I uh, say it's cruel mathematics. It's, it's uh, something that we'd be, you know, we have to experience and live with and why it is so important to avoid those deep losses on the left side. You're going to have losses in the portfolio. The stock market's going to have movements. I think on the 10% decline variety, we probably have close to 100 of those uh, you know, in the last uh, 90 years or so. We've had more than since 1928, I think, we've had 25% uh, declines that have dropped more than 20%. So uh, take our, you know, just the uh, recent experience, March of 2000 to October 2002, that was 31 months decline and we dropped 49%. So that's one of those deep varieties. And of course we went even further in, in uh, 2007, 2009, the market dropped 17 months, dropped 57%. Almost over there where the, you know, where the 60% decline is and you need 150% advance to break even. So those are things that we are realistically faced with and that doesn't even count of, uh, you know, from an investor standpoint, the recovery time. So uh, history, so not only are you losing money going through the left side here, but now how much time is it going to take you to recover and get back to the break even? How much time have we wasted, uh, you know, by holding on to having those large losses? So, so like uh, 1987, uh, the market uh, declined uh, substantially in about three hours and uh, and then it uh, took a long long time to uh, recover those losses and uh, get back to uh, prior high prices so this is implying of course the notion of buy and hold also so, exactly yeah. well we'll get it we'll show you uh, in a minute the that concept of buy and hold so uh, just keep in mind that History shows us over the last 90 years that the market has declined in 42 uh, of those 90 years, or the market goes up 48 years. But you just have to calculate and put into your process that uh, losses are normal, losses are cyclical. You just need to avoid the big losses. Keep them so. Small. Yeah. Right. So let's look at uh, more recent uh, history and let's just look at the real world in the last uh, 20 years. So you have a chart here of the S&P 500, uh, 20 year history, and the green marks when you're making money and you're, the S&P is going to new highs. And then if we have significant drawdowns, maybe the 15% variety or something like that, so you can see everything was pretty good, 1998, 1999, up until 2000. And then of course the market started a periodic bear market. Now, it also took time to recover. So what we're showing here is when did we get back to making money? When did we get back to increasing our net worth and our portfolio value? You see, we finally started making money, uh, in the middle of 2007, and of course, only to be hit with what? The great financial crises, the market, the S&P dropped 57% uh, in a year and a half. Now, here's that principle again. It takes time to recover those losses. When do we get to making uh, money in our portfolios? If you're you know, just using the S&P or just a buy and hold uh, investor in the S&P, you're out here in 2013. So finally, we're making, uh, you know, we're making uh, new highs in our portfolio. Uh, let me just use an example. One of the, you know, beliefs is, or common experience, common knowledge sold by Wall Street is, well, the stock market goes up 8 to 9% a year, 
And uh, when you retire, you could safely take out, say, 5%. Your portfolio would still grow, and, and you'd, uh, you know, on a million dollar portfolio, if you could live on 50,000, uh, you know, uh, drawing from your portfolio would be in great shape. But uh, this shows like sequence of risk. On our uh, website, we have the example of a person that retires with a million dollars in uh, 2000, safely assumes or assumes they could safely take out 5% a year and reinvest. And uh, I voucher nobody could guess what that portfolio is worth today. And make your guess. Um, but the, the reality is uh, that that portfolio taking out $50,000 a year is uh, not way up at the peak. That investor has about $320,000 left in their portfolio. Um, that chart's on our website, but you can play the math yourself. It's, uh, it's you know, just the lesson is you need to develop methods or techniques or a process system, a methodology to avoid those big drawdowns. And uh, let me just leave, leave us on uh, that note. It's enough about losses, but you can see why if you just do that one rule, just avoid the big loss, you'll, you'll experience the miracle of compounding your wealth. So. Let's, one, of uh, things, one of the things that uh, I'd like to point out here about Joe is, of course, I've, I've known Joe, work with Joe. He's my mentor. Everything I know about financial markets, I learned from Joe and, and Hank Pruden. We were kind of a threesome. And, uh, and then uh, uh, as time went on, Martin Pring became a very important mentor to me also. And Martin Pring and Joe Turner are partners, as we know. But the thing that I really appreciate about Joe and Martin is that they are uh, what I call, I've always called three-dimensional risk managers. And so the, the Joe, as you can tell, Joe's obsession is risk management. And so he spent an inordinate amount of time thinking about all of the different ways, techniques, methodologies that he could use to be able to put a protection under the portfolio. And so uh, because of that, there were all of these different uh, substructures, I would call them, in the portfolio to protect it uh, in the event of an uncertain decline like an 87 or like here. You can see this is from 2000 all the way to 2012. There's no net progress in this market. All it's done is create huge amounts of volatility, volatility and no net appreciation. And uh, this is a, a, a remarkably long, frustrating period of time to have no progress. And so there needs to be tools and techniques to be able to take the dips out of these, uh, out of portfolios that are being created by these markets. And uh, so this is one of the things I hope we can do more with Joe as time goes on. Okay, here we go. Sorry, I had to jump in there. Say yeah, that's, that's great. Um, so, so the bottom line is you have to have a process or a methodology to be able to handle losses. Uh, one of the, I think, greatest advances in, in my efficacy as a money manager uh, started out, starts out uh, with ourselves, with me or with you. And uh, I love the uh, country western song by Toby Keith. You know, it's all about me, 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 and it truly that's the where <laughs> the place to start if you want to be successful in the market is is really uh, understanding how you are wired. How and humans, you know, not only is Wall Street designed to separate us from our money, so is our our wiring, our uh, you know the way that we uh, our behavior, and some of these are the antithesis of making money in the market. But the, for me, the greatest advances were when, uh, and Bruce and I did this journey together in the early 80s or mid 80s, is just uh, uh, understanding ourselves better. Uh, Bruce mentioned uh, Hank Pruden, professor at uh, Golden Gate University, a delightful, uh, uh, delightful character who loved analyzing markets. But 
we spent many years uh, with a group studying studying ourselves and our behavior. Came up with something, and Bruce, this is maybe a program for another time, but uh, uh, Hank, and it um, uh, was a result of a number of these meetings, worked with uh, Van Tharp, who's a performance uh, coach uh, for uh, traders and investors. Came up with something called the 10 Tasks of Trading. And uh, you could all Google that, but I think that's a great place to start. And the first thing is self-analysis. So, but let me move on because I want to talk just a little bit here about an antidote for losing money. And I said, everybody has to have a methodology or a system. And um, this is just what, uh, what we have developed over uh, those 50 years is just a way to look uh, at markets and be able to come up with a decision-making process where we, even if technology changes, markets change, and so on and so forth, that we can continue turning the crank and come up with a successful uh, conclusion and, and positive investment results over uh, almost any kind of environment. So for us, this uh, starts out with um, uh, looking at the big, broad picture. I mentioned at the beginning when I started talking that uh, I watched, the, I parachuted into the industry in December of 68, and uh, for 14 years watched the stock market go down. That's a secular period. So we want to know what the secular outlook is for the three main uh, investment groups that we have, the stocks, bonds, and commodities. Uh, early in my career, I was turned on to the bank credit analysts and money and investment profits, a book that was written by the founder of the bank credit analysts. That's also where I first uh, was introduced to Martin Pring, who was a technical analyst for the bank credit analyst back in the early 70s. Uh, and that's all about business cycle analysis. Where we are in the business cycle really is the greatest influence on whatever asset class we're looking at. So that uh, identifying where we are in the business cycle helps us with the asset allocation uh, decision, what sectors we want to emphasize or not emphasize. Uh, we'll break it down further into what's the market outlook for the next, say, two to six months. So we've got the big picture, the secular, we've got the business cycle. Now, if we look at the stock market, every two or three or four months, there's a turn. Either the market turns up or the market turns down. And uh, so there's opportunity in, the, uh, in that intermediate time frame to uh, uh, plant or prune or whatever, and we use uh, a model we call the fuel tank uh, to do that. The uh, bottom, the last decisions we make about uh, uh, investing are we wanna put high quality, good value, and high solid income into a portfolio. And from quality standpoint, Standard & Poor's has done research work that will show the advantage of uh, staying with high quality, uh, there's all sorts of value studies uh, out there. And of course, income, we like to, to create more income than the market provides us by our stock selection proce process. That gets us eventually to our, um, to our investment portfolio. So it's a combination of this, these things. This is our system. This is our decision-making process. And I just ask you, what is your system? What is the process that you make decisions and that you can keep doing over and over and over again? And you learn from each exercise. You learn how to improve or tweak what, uh, what that system is. So- And, and buried in, in this pyramid, this inverted pyramid, are these uh, uh, many dimensions of risk management. And uh, it's a little obscure right here because they have to be sort of unfolded and talked about, and these are the things that I'm hoping that we can do with Joe in future episodes, is that we can literally drill in, because the thing that Joe and Martin do really, really well, better than most everybody, is that they're exceptional uh, uh, model builders for different environments. They are really good at the long term, they're good at the business cycle level, and at the intermediate term, in terms of doing their um, uh, decision-making, building decision-making processes 
uh, out of technical indicators and then turning those into in, uh, portfolio management uh, decision making processes. And we want to, in the future, is to have uh, some of this um, uh, revealed to us. Martin does a lot of this in his uh, uh, blog work and in his presentations at stockcharts.com. And uh, we would like to uh, have Joe uh, reveal some of this to us because Joe, in his own right, is exceptionally good at this also. Let me, uh, I have uh, probably time for one more little uh, section here, but just to circle back what Bruce said about uh, uh, Martin, I think his upcoming talk will talk about the business cycle and maybe some of the intermarket uh, relationships that, uh, that he sees uh, in this current business cycle environment where we are today. So I think that he'll uh, shed more light on that. I really but, want, uh, this is a personal thing for me, because I've seen Joe work with this tool for the last 40 years and uh, is the fuel tank. He's called it other things in the past, but, but the essence of it is the same. And so the fuel tank and uh, Joe, if you could just uh, give us a, uh, just a, a really brief uh, in the last couple of minutes we have overview here. Sure. So uh, recall that we have in our inverted pyramid or decision-making process, we get down to looking at what's the outlook for, you know, the next uh, two, three, four months, uh, because we'll get several of those opportunities a year. Uh, and what we did is we designed a fuel tank to try and identify the low risk or high risk uh, windows for the stock market over the next few months. And there's, you know, you could imagine on an intermediate basis, there's more sentiment uh, involved in, in uh, direction of interest rates or liquidity or whatever that comes into, uh, into the decision. So looking at the scale on the right, we have zero to 100. Uh, it's plotted inversely to the New York composite, the blue graph. And it just shows that when the fuel tank fills up, and uh, we get these 80 or 85 or 90 or 95% readings, we tend to have a full tank of gas and the market can, can proceed uh, upward and travel a distance, a profitable distance. So uh, we, gave, we highlighted this uh, indicator back in uh, early January at the technical security analyst uh, talk and it was about 96%. We said, hey, you know, it's a low risk window. The, the fuel tank is full. Uh, the market can, uh, can travel north at a pretty good speed. So that's where we are. And now we're starting to wear off some of the, some of the good stuff uh, off of that because uh, uh, the fuel tank is now, you know, only 70% full. Okay, so it just. Joe. Sorry, go ahead. Conclude your. Uh, no, it's just. Just going to say it's just a good uh, little tool that helps us uh, identify, you know, again, the two or three times a year that we might get a, a, a decent opportunity because things are lined up. The fuel tank is full. The market can go. We're going to get Joe to tell us about how he decides which components should go into these indicators for the time frame that we're in. We are just about out of time. but. Uh, Joe would like you to know that you can go to printturner.com to their blog uh, page and you can sign up for their newsletter, which uh, is a must read. And then also do come back to listen to uh, Martin and Joe uh, talk more about this very subject in, uh, uh, at, on February 19th. And uh, thank you for attending today and we'll see you next time.